from missing a shift to being in the wrong gear when you're kicking it sideways and not forgetting that I was going to discuss aero upgrades in this video so from having good downforce to just losing speed this is the part of the guide where I will explain everything about the parts that go between your engine and your wheels and the ankle killer that's at the front of the car and the dining surface at the back Hello and welcome back everybody to part 4 of my complete guide slash tutorial for Forza Horizon 5. I want to begin by thanking everybody who has been following the series so far. If you have been following the series and you are enjoying it, show me some love and drop the hammer on that like button. Also to all the new viewers just coming to the series, I want to welcome all of you to my channel and you should subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with the series and other content relating to Forza Horizon 5. There are some new projects I am working on besides the tutorial series and there will be a preview of what's coming up so you can look forward to that. I'll mention these at the end of the video. Now then, you already know what I'm going to be discussing in this video so let's get down to the grind and talk about everything around your gearbox. Just don't grind those gears though, that would be um, bad. So let's begin with clutch upgrades which is this pedal here that some people think of as a second brake pedal. Now these upgrades depend on what transmission option you chose to drive with. For those of you who are driving manual with clutch, you can skip clutch upgrades entirely. Driving manual with clutch isn't a bad idea if you are always finding that you end up falling behind because your car doesn't have enough grunge to straight up inhale the road, forget about eating it. The reason for this is because you are sacrificing some PI that you could use for power upgrades for the clutch upgrade that you want to use. If you are driving manual with clutch, you can skip getting these clutch upgrades, save some PI and then your shifts will happen as fast as your fingers can hit the buttons or whatever other controls you're using like a clutch pedal and actual H shifter. That PI that is saved can go to power upgrades giving you an extra edge over your competition. Another thing is driving manual with clutch is good for drifting because it will allow you to do clutch kicks to initiate a drift or to shock the drivetrain if your car cannot maintain a drift. For those of you driving with automatic or manual without clutch, in any build up to A class, I would recommend a minimum of a sport clutch upgrade. But when you get up to S1 and higher, race grade clutches will be the most beneficial. The goal with clutch upgrades is to keep your acceleration going and slow shifts will not help with this. Transmission upgrades are next on our list with a whole bunch of options ranging from 6 to 10 speed racing gearboxes, a 4 speed drift gearbox and finally street and sport transmissions. Now there are some pointers that I need to mention and these will let you know what to pay attention to when building your car. 
Firstly, you should pick a transmission upgrade as one of the first items in your upgrade list so that you can see how power upgrades make a difference to your build. Press toggle till you can see the top speed of the car. Keeping the stock transmission won't allow you to see much of a change to top speed because stock and even street transmission can't be adjusted. Now with your upgraded adjustable transmission, it now has the room to adjust for that added power and your top speed will climb according to what power upgrades you chose. Small side note, by now you should realize that power upgrades are something you should leave for last because if your car doesn't have the right components everywhere else, you may have some trouble with tuning the car properly and then if that doesn't work out properly, then you have to compensate for the bad tuning with your driving ability. Another thing I wanted to mention is more gears do not mean better acceleration. I will explain soon with each kind of option from here. The minimal upgrade is street transmission. This option will just increase your shift time and help with acceleration just a little bit. And honestly you should avoid this because the benefit you want from a gearbox upgrade is to have adjustable gear ratios. Sport transmission will give you the option to adjust your final drive ratio for more acceleration or more top speed. The one thing to note about the sport transmission though is that each of the gear ratios will be kept the same as the car's stock ratios. So if you don't like how long or short a specific gear is, you won't be able to adjust this but the good part about sport transmission is that it saves PI and by adjusting final drive you can set it up in order to get a good output in terms of acceleration and or top speed. The drift gearbox is the next on our list and it is obviously ideal for drifting because it is fully adjustable and having 4 gears means you can set the gearbox to control your speed because quite frankly your throttle no longer controls your speed when you're in a drift. A small hint I will give all of you for now is your accelerator should be used to steer your car from the point where you initiate a drift to the point where you end it and your gears control your speed. First gear is for really slow, really tight corners like doing donuts or something. Second gear is for a bit more speed so you could use that if you were going through 90 degree corners or wider figure of eights. Third gear will give you the speed you really want where you see the corner being longer with a nice flow to it. And fourth gear is if you have a really long swooping corner but you need to be carrying a lot of speed to get through this kind of corner in fourth gear while holding your drift. Finally, all the race transmission upgrade options are up next and these are also fully adjustable and have different applications. Before I begin discussing each option, I'm going to throw up a table on screen and this is to give you a brief idea of what gearbox should work based on what build you want to do. You can pause it now to take a good look at everything. One important note is to never forget that the sports transmission is a good option if you're looking to save just a little bit of PI for another upgrade and again, the guide on screen is just that, it's a suggestion, doesn't mean that you should always follow it. Your experience with my suggestions may not work and that is absolutely fine. It just means that you're identifying an issue with your build and that is a good step in the right direction when it comes to perfecting it. Starting with the 6 speed racing gearbox, this is ideal for any build that you want to do with a more lightweight vehicle and by this I mean anything that doesn't fall under being an SUV or pickup or 4x4. I also prefer to use 6 speed gearboxes in any build up to A class and more for builds that are not all wheel drive. The gear ratios can be kept longer, they can have more pull from the end of your torque band which will give you a good acceleration boost when you're shifting through the lower gears like first through to third 
and you can stay in the engine's power band for longer, pulling more top end from each of the higher gears going from 4th through to 6th. Having a 6 speed will also help with your driving because you will have less gears to go through and this will help you master what gear is needed for each kind of corner. Let's say you were going through a 90 degree corner and perhaps you should be in 2nd because you messed up your 9 or you could be in 3rd if you got your 9 perfect and you can carry more speed. The 7 speed is next on our list and this is a good choice and you could use this as a linear gear setup to just accelerate all the way to the car's top speed or when you have a car that can accelerate to a decent high speed but still has a long way to go till it reaches the actual top speed and I'm gonna explain that now. So let's say you've got a car that can reach 280 kilometers an hour easily and it struggles to its actual top speed of 320. For this kind of car I would set up the gears in a way that 6th would reach 280 kilometers an hour and I would leave 7th to reach 320 and I found that this works pretty well because I would be pulling this gear from a late part of the torque band and that will help me actually get to the top speed at a decent rate I would say. Then we have the 8 speed gearbox and this is where there is a sort of transition from using it in lightweight cars to heavyweight pickups and 4x4s. What I am trying to say is with an 8 speed you can either use this as linear gears much like the 7 speed for a lightweight car or a low gear high gear scenario and unfortunately this is something I'm gonna have to explain in the tuning part of the series but don't stress because this is actually coming up really soon and I'm super excited to begin that because this guide as a whole will actually start to fit together nicely. The 9 and 10 speed gearboxes are what I would use for heavy vehicles only. With this many gears I would go with the low gear high gear scenario and basically have torque reintroduced with every odd gear to help keep these heavy vehicles accelerating. Next up on our list is driveline upgrades. This is an option you should look at when you've completed your build because this can add one or two PI just to top off your target PI. Alternatively, if you are looking for more acceleration, this is an okay option because the lighter driveline will mean that the engine needs to work less in order to spin the driving wheels. It doesn't have a big effect but will still help nevertheless. You should always be checking back here at the end of every build though that you do just to see if you can add this because most of the time this upgrade doesn't add enough performance to increase the PI of your build but it's good to have it nevertheless. The final option in this category is differentials. Each have their own abilities and characteristics. The purpose of differentials is to control how fast your driving wheels lock up meaning that your wheels will either be driving at the same speed or a different speed on either side of the axle when both under acceleration and deceleration or in other words when you're on the throttle or off the throttle and braking. A more open differential will let the wheels spin at different speeds but will send more torque to the wheel that has less resistance on it and a more closed differential will make the wheels spin at the same speeds. With regards to whether you should add differentials yes definitely differentials do not add any pi to your build which mean that they are basically a pi free upgrade and this is the first game that did that if i remember correctly so make sure you're always adding differential upgrades to your build street and sport differentials just skip these because with street differentials you cannot make any adjustments and with sport you can only adjust how much lock you want under acceleration so don't bother wasting your money or your time now onto the good ones and first up is the race differential this should always be added to your car if you are building for street or road racing this differential tends to be more open meaning that these do not lock up the driving wheels to be spinning at the same speed and allow your build to have tighter cornering with smoother handling. The reason for this is because of the friction that comes with driving on asphalt and these differentials allow your driving wheels to turn at different speeds while coping with the friction of the road surface. Rally differentials should be used for, you know, you guessed it, rally builds. These come with a higher than normal amount of lock under acceleration and low amount of lock under deceleration. I'm going to reference part 1 of my series yet again where I said you should be using an oversteer driving style in any off-road situation and here is the in-game reference as proof. The high amount of lock under acceleration or when you're on the throttle will make your driving wheels lock up faster and help push the car into the corner with oversteer and you can do this with rally builds because the surface doesn't have a lot of friction. The low amount of lock under deceleration when you're off the throttle or braking will let you change direction quickly enough during sharp cornering. Off-road differentials are next and they are meant for cross-country builds. 
This differential comes with full lock both under deceleration and acceleration and if it's installed on an all-wheel drive build, then the torque sent to the front and rear wheels will be balanced 50-50. This is because in cross-country races, the surfaces that you drive on are more rougher and even more than mixed surface tracks, but they still have less friction and with that you will need your wheels to be spinning at the same speed all the time so that you can continue to push ahead through these surfaces as straight as possible. When it comes to cornering, the oversteer driving style comes into play even more so because of this and you will notice that as you're going through the corner, the car will tend to hold the direction that you're pushing it towards without even counter steering as long as you stay on the throttle. Finally, drift differentials are for drift balls. These differentials come with a very high amount of lock under acceleration and a very low amount of lock under deceleration. The high amount of lock under acceleration is meant to get your wheels spinning at the same speed quickly enough to either initiate or hold a drift when you're on the throttle. And when you come off the throttle, the low amount of lock under deceleration is to allow you to perform more intermediate drifting techniques like the axle off or can't say technique and in my opinion, these techniques are usually better done with rear wheel drivers. Now that drivetrain upgrades are done, time to move on to the next category and that is aero upgrades. Aero upgrades are not just for cosmetics but I hope that you're ready for this because even if you're not, it is time for a montage in the background. And I know I said that aero is not just for cosmetics but don't you just love how aggressive some of these cars can look? Although this is not available for every car in the game. The main aero options you will find are a lip for the front of the car and a spoiler for the rear. There are body kit options for some cars as you can see on screen and these usually just change the look with a little change to the performance of the car except for spoilers which I will explain in a bit. And also don't forget that there are some cars with wide body kit options and these wide body kit options will generally take the space of the front lip. There are adjustable options for the front lip and the rear spoiler and you can tell this because it will say this in the green block that's right over here. There is a downside to these adjustable options though and that is you sacrifice top speed. This is because of how aero works and that's going to be explained in the tuning guide. For now, toggle over to where you can find top speed and pay attention to just how much top speed comes down by when you're installing aero parts. Now the special note I wanted to mention about spoilers, whether it's adjustable or not, Spoilers take a huge chunk of top speed. I guess this is why they call it a spoiler and not a make better rara. Yes, this will give you an edge to keep the rear stable but at some point you might get left behind because of the drag that the rear spoiler adds to your car and this is even for the spoilers that are not adjustable and it also depends on the size of the spoiler. My recommendation for installing aero parts is to avoid it in anything for A class and below. It becomes optional for S1 builds and is necessary for S2. This is because in A class and below you will be spending most of your time running at speeds lower than what you need your downforce to actually be working, especially with slower and tighter tracks and the sacrifice that you do to your top speed doesn't weigh up to the benefit that you get for handling on the longer, faster and more open tracks. Yes, some people use it in A and B class and there's nothing wrong with that but in my experience, with the right car that was optimized, with its building and the tuning was done right, I was always able to get away with not having aero upgrades and one other big part that helps is really knowing your tracks that you race on as well. Now that concludes the aero category, there wasn't much to discuss in the first place and this was a short video but the benefit with that is I can get started sooner on the next video which means that we can continue to push ahead and get closer to the tuning part of the series where everything will start to make sense in a big way. On that note, in the next video I will be discussing platform and handling upgrades and I will be answering the following questions. Which suspension upgrade is right for you? Should you get anti-roll bar upgrades? Do you really need bigger and better brakes? Does a roll cage make a difference to your build? Is it better to have weight reduction upgrades or power upgrades? I am also going to be discussing engine and power upgrades but I'm going to try and summarize that part in the sense that I won't be breaking down what each part does for you. I mean most of them don't change the car by much, they just add power so instead I will just discuss the order that you should look at for power upgrades or rather what sort of priority level each power upgrade has. 
and unfortunately it is time to end this video i hope all of you enjoyed it and as always i hope it helps you with whatever journey you've decided to choose in forza horizon 5 if you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like button and to all the new viewers please subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with the series as well as other content relating to forza horizon 5 i am planning to go more into online racing videos now that the car collection of forza horizon 5 seems to be rounding out quite nicely i might even begin a review series with my own special twist with regards to how i review the cars in forza horizon 5 ladies and gentlemen boys and girls it is time to end but it won't be for long as always drive fast and stay sharp this is shini signing off okay bye